Oh great, another global sports ball tournament. Another three weeks of being bombarded by reminders of the message. <laughs> What is this? Primetime Islamophobia? <laughs> Maybe the Empire will simply cringe itself to death. This dude, Adam Hills. <laughs> Nice lyrics, mate. Don't suppose that song was a part of your act when you took a big fat check to go and perform in Dubai. Germany weren't allowed to wear their one love armbands, so they covered their mouths instead. Cringe. Hope Joachim Love didn't join in. Maybe they should have concentrated more on the game itself. Oof. The players arrived in Qatar on a plane that said, Diversity wins! Doesn't look like it. Good game. Germany's Federal Minister of the Interior, Nancy Faser, defied the authorities and wore a one love armband because she really cares about free speech. Wait a minute, she's the same woman trying to ban the Telegram app in Germany because it supports free speech. In Qatar, they'll arrest you for promoting LGBT. In Western countries, they'll arrest you for disrespecting LGBT. We're so much better. Because someone has been caused, obviously, anxiety based upon your social media sites. It wasn't about making a political statement. Human rights are non-negotiable. That should be taken for granted, but it still isn't the case. That's why this message is so important to us. So important to defy Qatar that you all travelled three and a half thousand miles to compete in a tournament in Qatar. Yeah, real important. So important, you could have worn the armbands, but you didn't because your players might have received a yellow card, which is seemingly more important. The Welsh Football Association was so mad, they put rainbow flags up at their training ground. I understand why everybody would be upset about the One Love armband not being there, but there was no way we could ask Gareth Bale to take a yellow or red card at his first World Cup. How could you do that? Oh no, Gareth Bale might get a yellow card. So what? Not very important to you then, is it? German players all wore rainbow boots. Take that, homophobes. That'll definitely force Qatar into revoking its laws on homosexuality, which are based on a 14-year-old religion. Word has it, the Quran is being entirely rewritten for the modern era because Denmark players wore protest jerseys that look like plain t-shirts. Breaking news now from the uh, FIFA Men's uh, World Cup. FIFA says that fans will not be allowed to buy alcohol around World Cup stadiums in Doha. Let's pause there for a word from today's video sponsor. It's never too early to start looking for holiday gifts. I mean, I've had my Christmas tree up since the start of November. Neighbours think I'm a bit weird. More so than they already did. But you can make this a season to be jolly with Manscaped. The performance package 4.0 sitting under the tree is guaranteed to put anyone in the holiday spirit. Included in the package, Manscaped sent me this. The Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer. No one wants to see that. You'll just have to take my word for it. It's waterproof, smooth to use, and will ensure you don't get shunned this Christmas like a hairy beast when standing under the mistletoe. The Weed Whacker features proprietary advanced skin-safe technology to protect your delicate presence. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts to their performance package 4.0. The Manscaped Boxers and Shed Travel Bag, both especially made to hold your goodies. Also, you need to stop biting your nails, it's disgusting. So for the perfect stocking stuffer, add in Shears 2.0, a luxury four-piece nail kit featuring tempered stainless steel tools within a compact case made of premium PU leather. Men are notoriously difficult to buy gifts for, so buy them something they'll actually use. Go to manscaped.com and use promo code PJW and they'll give you 20% off and free shipping. Or just go directly to manscaped.com slash PJW. And remember, by supporting my sponsor, so you support me directly. Now back to the video. Woke England manager Gareth Southgate told his players to start taking a knee again before games. These players will, as Gareth Southgate promised they would, take the knee. Cringe, which as we're assured by regime messaging, is just a generic anti-racism stance and has nothing whatsoever to do with Black Lives Matter as an organisation. Despite the gesture starting after the BLM George Floyd riots, despite players literally wearing the words Black Lives Matter on their shirts, despite stadiums being adorned with giant BLM flags, nothing to do with Black Lives Matter. No doubt when England get knocked out of the competition again, the media will blame their failure on racist Instagram posts, thereby absolving Southgate once again of any responsibility for his crap tactics and managerial skills. We have 
discuss taking the knee, we feel we should. Another delicious irony is England fans being told by anti-racist group Kick It Out not to dress up as St. George. Why? Because it might offend Muslims. Right, so after all the LGBT flags, One Love armbands and rainbow boots, now you're concerned about offending Muslims. Meanwhile, not content with besieging viewers with just one form of the message, the BBC went the extra mile. During half-time of the game between France and Australia, Gary Lineker from the comfort of his air-conditioned Qatari studio introduced a short film about climate change hysteria in the form of finger-wagging over the tournament's carbon footprint. An event that promised to be carbon neutral. A bold statement, so will it. Cringe. It's not good enough for the news to jettison its impartiality in service of the message. Now your half-time sports broadcast has to prostrate itself too. Licence fee payers complained about being lectured, seemingly unaware of the fact that this now seems to be the BBC's overriding primary purpose. Gotta get the message across somehow. We're staying home, we're staying home, LGBT plus staying home. Well, you've got to give them credit. Most of the people on television vilifying Qatar all dignified the competition by going to Qatar. We're still being subjected to lectures about the message by Gary Neville, who keeps banging on about Qatari human rights abuses. I detest uh, workers' rights abuses. I hate the idea of people not being paid enough money, the people who are working in poor conditions, uh, the idea of people not having good accommodation, the fact that women's rights um, aren't adhered to, or that there are human rights abuses. I can't stand it. Gary can't stand it. I can't stand it. But he can stand it just enough to get paid a giant wad of cash by Being Sports to cover the tournament for them. I can't stand it. Who owns Being Sports? Hmm, I wonder. Um. Oh, it's the Qatari government. Um. I don't feel conflicted, can't stand it. Gary can't stand it, but his bank balance doesn't seem to have a problem with it. Um, Cringe. This whole event is just another giant amplified showcase for the message. Remember, when they say diversity, they mean the exact opposite. They mean uniformity of thought. Everyone must think the same. Everyone must share their value system. A value system so innately benevolent, progressive and kind that it requires relentless enforced compliance and indoctrination. An ostracization of anyone who questions or opposes it. The flag has its variations. It could be this, 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 or this. But the message remains the same. Our ability to accept. These flags are symbols of ideological hegemony. You may agree with that hegemony. You may think it's a force for good. Dissidents would see them as socio-psychic pollution, but no one can deny that it's all based on a newly manufactured dominant value system not tradition or anything else. And when we witness one love armbands, rainbow boots, take a knee, those are loyalty oaths to this new ideological hegemony. And the regime doesn't look too kindly upon people who refuse to yield to their all-encompassing ideological takeover. Armies display flags to signify occupation and takeover of territory. The regime displays flags to signify occupation and control of your mind.